What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to build a real time spelling checker in Python with a graphical user interface. So let us get right into it. Alright, so let us briefly take a look at what we're going to end up with here as a motivation for the video. This is the final result, just a simple graphical user interface uh, with a text box and we can write some text here, hello world, for example. And you can see nothing happens because those are two valid words. But if I say, for example, hello, and now I misspell world like this, you can see that it's marked in red and I can then change it again to world and then it's corrected again. So hello world, what is going on? This also works with special characters. So just because there's a question mark, uh, it still recognizes that on is a valid word. Um, and you know, we can continue writing some stuff, some, and now I can misspell stuff again, uh, like this. And then I can continue writing. And then I can go back and fix stuff. And uh, you can see it's fixed then again. Now, this is triggered by a space. So we don't check all the time because this would be unnecessary. Because when I am currently writing a word like currently, this is not a valid word yet. Uh, so I don't check yet. But if I enter space, if I click on space, you can see that it's highlighted. But if I then change it to currently, it's black again, because that's a valid word. This is what we're going to end up with here in today's video. Alright, so for this video today, we're going to need something that allows us to validate individual words, we need something that allows us to check whether a word exists or not in the English language. And there are multiple methods that you can use here. There are multiple different Python packages. In this video today, I'm going to use the NLTK Python package, which is the natural language toolkit, one of the most commonly used packages in natural language processing, you can use that as well. Or you can just go with your own strategy here, but you need something that allows you to validate individual words. And if you want to use the natural language toolkit, you need to open up your command line and you need to install it using pip install NLTK. So once you have that, we're going to start with the imports, we're going to start with some core Python imports by saying import re for regular expressions. Uh, we're only going to use regular expressions to get rid of the special characters in a simple way. We want to get rid of all the commas, all the question marks, all the dots and stuff like that. Because when a word has a question mark, if we split all the words on spaces, we're going to have words that end with a question mark. And obviously, those are not going to be valid for words because the question mark is not part of the word. But we still want to just focus on the word, which is why we need to remove the question marks, uh, and all the other symbols. And we're going to do that with regular expressions efficiently. Uh, also, we're going to import TK inter as TK for the graphical user interface. And in particular, we're going to import from TK inter dot scroll text, the scroll text uh, widget, I guess, then we're going to import NLTK. And we're going to also import from NLTK dot corpus, we're going to import here, words, and in order to be able to use words, we're going to have to download um, the respective features. So we're going to say NLTK dot download. And here we need to pass the string words. And this is what is going to allow us to check whether a word is valid or not. So this is going to give us a collection of all the different words. So once we have that, we're going to define our class called spelling checker. And uh, it's not going to extend from anything, we're going to build everything in the init method. So we're going to define a constructor, and we're going to start by saying, if we want to have a basic graphical user interface, self dot root is going to be tk tk, then the geometry of self dot root is going to be 600 as a string, of course, 600 times 500. And then we're going to just add a simple scrolled text. So we're going to say self dot text equals scrolled text, we're going to make it part of self dot root, and we're going to give it a font, which is Arial font size 14. And then self dot text, we're going to bind the event of a key release. So whenever you type something, you press a key, and then you release the key. And once you release the key, we want to trigger a function, which we're going to define here. So this function is going to check, but it's not always going to check because that would, as I said, uh, not make a lot of sense here. Uh, we're going to only check when the number of spaces has changed. So we're going to say here now, we're going to bind the event of key release, which is specified like this as a string. 
we're going to bind this to a function self dot check with which we don't have yet. So we need to say self, uh, or actually def check with a keyword self here with a parameter self we're going to pass for now. So we're going to leave it empty. And now whenever we release the key, we're going to trigger this function check, we're going to call this function check. And then we're going to say self dot text pack like this to basically add it to the GUI. Finally, and then we're going to also say self dot root dot main loop to get the graphical user interface running. And I can actually just print hello world here so that you can see what happens. We're going to create a simple instance down here of spelling checker, which is going to run a graphical user interface. Um, and when I type something, uh, no, we have a problem here, I think we need to take an event as well even though we're not going to use it, it passes it. So we need to um, have it here in the function signature. But if I now type something, you can see it always prints hello world, because when I release the key, the hello world function is triggered. So this check function, which prints hello world, and here we're going to do the actual checking. Um, and what we need to do for this here is we need to define a simple variable, or simple counter, which we're going to call old spaces, we're going to start with zero, because by default, we have zero white spaces in the text. And we're going to always keep track of that number to see if it changes. And if it changes, we're going to check for the validity of the text. So uh, we're going to say the content, we're going to get in the check function, the content of the scroll text. So we're going to say self dot text, dot get and in TK intro, we need to specify this in a funny way, we have the starting point 1.0, which is the first character and then 1.1 is the second character 1.3 is uh, 1.2 is the third character and so on. And then we go up until TK end. this basically just gives us the full content of the text box. And now we're going to just count the spaces, we're going to say content dot count, we're going to count how many white spaces we have. And then if this space count is not the same as self old spaces. So if there is some change, we're going to first of all, update the old spaces to the space count. And we're going to then say, um, for word in content, and we're going to split the content on white spaces, by the way, I'm not claiming that this is the most efficient solution here, probably there's something that is much more efficient, but this works and it doesn't uh, doesn't crash the system. So we're going to do it like that. For each word that we find in the content when we split by um, white spaces, so a word is defined by just having white spaces left and right. Uh, essentially, um, we're going to say now, first of all, we want to lower we want to have the lower case of the word, and we also want to remove all the special characters. So we're going to say if re dot sub for su substitute, we're going to find with a regular expression. So we're going to provide an R here, we're going to say everything that is not so this hat symbol here, everything that is not backslash w. So basically a character, um, everything that is not that we need to surround this with square brackets, um, is going to be replaced by nothing. So we're just going to remove it in word dot lower. So if you're confused about the regular expression, I have a video on regular expressions also in Python. So you can check that out if you want to. But basically, this this year just targets all the characters. And this basically negates that. So we're getting everything that is not a character and removing it from the word. And we're calling word dot lower to have the lowercase version because uh, this just doesn't produce any troubles. Um, and we want to see if this thing so the cleaned up lowercase word, if that is not part of words, dot words, this is from NLTK now. Um, not in sorry, not in words dot words, this checks if the word is valid or not. If that is not valid, we're going to say get me the position of that particular word that is invalid. So content dot find this word. Um, and add a tag around this word. So we're going to say self dot text dot tag add, this is part of TK enter, we can add a tag to a certain um, range in the text, and we can then style that tag. So we can say, okay, from here to here, this is the tag of the invalid word. And then we can say, okay, this section should be read. So invalid, essentially, and we can just get the word, we can say, we're going to do this as an F string here, one point position, remember, 
1.0 is the first character, 1.1 is the second character, and so on and so forth. So one point position is going to be the character at position position. Um, and we're going to say from here up until F, and then one point in here position plus the length of the word. So from start to end of the word, we're going to add this tag and then we're going to say self dot text dot tag config. And the word is the identifier of the tag, the foreground of this shall be red. That's the basic idea. Now, one thing that we need to do here, though, is we need to also remove that color, we need to remove that foreground or the tag altogether. Um, if we don't have any invalid words anymore. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to just by default, whenever we check, we're going to remove all the text. So for tag in self dot text dot tag names, we're going to just say self dot text dot tag delete tag. So we're going to reset this and then we're going to do this if something is not all right. So that should basically be it. I'm not sure if I forgot something. I think that is actually the whole program. We can run this now. And we can try the same thing as before. So hello world. What is going on? You can see everything's fine. If I now say what is going with an H, this is now marked red. Question mark. Okay, no, we have a problem. This should not actually Oh, I know why because that reset obviously has to be done after the check. Otherwise, it's just going to always reset, which is not what we want. We want to only reset when we evaluate things again. So we need to do it in here. Uh, because otherwise, every time we call check, we're going to reset, but we only want to reset when the spaces have changed so that we can check again. I think that was the mistake. Let's go again. Hello world. What is going on question mark? Everything's fine. Okay. What is going on? Now you can see it's red. And now I can change this again to going on and it's fine again. So yeah, this is how you build a live spell checking tool in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.